Hey everyone, finish watching the next Dino Thunder episode, The Missing Bone. And after the last couple of episodes really disappointed me, this one... I really like this one. It's got some weird stuff in it, but overall, this was an enjoyable episode. I wish more episodes were like this one. So, summary, Trent's still going to school, despite seemingly being completely overtaken by the evil White Ranger. Principal Randall calls him to her office and gives him a pretty basic principal speech. It's kind of weird seeing Randall not be, like, transparently evil for the first time in, like, the entire series. Like, she's just being a normal principal, pretty much, in this, uh, in this scene. Um, there's, there is a weird line, though, where she mentions, uh, what's up with his skin tone. Okay. Not really sure what that's meant to imply, since Trent doesn't really look weird. Like, is the implication supposed to be that he looks sick? Because that would have fit better a few episodes ago. He looks pretty normal right now. Whatever. Anyway, Trent's reactions and responses here are very different from what Trent would normally do on his own. It really shows that the evil White Ranger has completely taken over him. Dr. O's class, the students, are expecting a substitute. Principal Randall comes in to introduce the sub, and it's... Mr. Anton Mercer. <gasps> Gasp. He hands out permission slips for a field trip the next day. Later, the Rangers see Trent and Mercer arguing, and, uh, yeah, that's it. That's all we see of Trent for this episode. Kind of weird. He's been such a huge character the last couple of episodes, and this time they just kind of shove him off. Okay. Like, just as well, I was getting tired of the evil White Ranger story, but it is kind of weird to just forget that Trent's like, being overtaken by this evil entity for a little while. Whatever. The Rangers go their separate ways, Connor to soccer practice, Ethan to computer club, and Kira goes to help out Dr. O. Kira tells Tommy about Anton Mercer being their new substitute, and Tommy is accepting, and he trusts Mercer, and he tells Kira that uh, Mercer taught him a lot. Kira's looking through Tommy's stuff and finds a weird-looking bone, and uh, Tommy takes it and uh, says it's important, he locks it away, and Kira... Thinks that's a little weird, but she doesn't dwell, dwell on it. The next day is the field trip. Kira takes notice of a strange-looking Tyrannosaurus statue out front. The others brush off her suspicions. Despite that statue looking an awful lot like the one Tommy encountered back at the beginning of the season. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same statue. Which would mean it's not really a statue, it's a robot. And it never comes back in this episode. Kind of weird. This episode has quite a few things that seem like they should be important and that they should be coming back later, but then they they just never do. So inside the museum, Kira sees some shadows run by and they look like tyrannodrones. She goes to check it out and Cassidy follows her and we get a kind of neat little scene here where uh, Cassidy follows Kira and she's like, hey, what are you doing? And Kira's like, oh, uh, I was going to the bathroom. And Cassidy's like, oh, cool, I gotta go to the bathroom too. I gotta touch up my makeup. And then Kira's like, oh, well, uh, and she's trying to figure out a way out of this. And <laughs> so, because she needs to go check on what's going on over there, but she can't let Cassidy know what she's really doing. Then uh, Anton Mercer comes over and he's like, Cassidy, where'd you go? You come back with the group. And so then she goes back and Kira ducks out and Mercer misses her. Kira sneaks into a storage room in the back and it's the same storage room that Marin Capri freed Shimatsu in back in Ninja Storm. Huh. I'll talk about that later on. Tyrannodrones attack Kira, and suddenly a nearby dinosaur skull hypnotizes her. Connor and Ethan find Kira wandering around afterwards. They know something's weird with her, and they try to talk to her, but she rudely brushes them off. She runs off to the middle of the woods. She contacts Tommy and tells him that she found something. Tommy drives through an invisiportal to her location, and there's a really weird thing here. Tommy is clearly coming out of an invisiportal but he's also coming out of the cave entrance to his own lab. Why is there an invisiportal at the... What's it even there for? It's so strange to me, they went to the extra trouble of putting in an effect that just... It doesn't make any sense to be there. Was it supposed to be an explosion from the four-wheeler that he's riding? Really bizarre... Visual choice there. The voice of the dinosaur skull echoes in Kira's head and tells her to go in and steal the strange bone that she saw earlier. She goes in and Tommy calls Kira to tell her that he can't find anything. Kira responds that she must have been mistaken and politely apologizes. Which is 
quite the contrast to how she treated Connor and Ethan earlier. So then she steals the bone, and Connor and Ethan accompany Tommy back to his lab, where they find the bone from earlier missing. Tommy tells them that the bone is part of a creature that he and Mercer had created in the past, Fossilador. Or, as Tommy says, Fossildor. I don't know. In the end credits, it says Fossilador, but Tommy, it sounds like he just says Fossildor. I don't know. He's the only one who says the name, so I don't know why they bothered spelling it in a weird way in the credits, whatever. Tommy and Mercer created Fossilador, and also they were they were trying to create a monster with mind control abilities. Why? Why, 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 I don't know. Moving on. It doesn't matter. It never gets an explanation. Connor and Ethan don't consider this weird and ask any follow-up questions. Tommy just made a mind control monster in the past and everyone's cool with it. They do figure out that Kira must be the culprit. They put the clues together, and that's one of the cool things with this episode, is the rangers actually put it together, they figure out clues. Kira brings the bone back to the dinosaur skull, and with it, Fossil Ador regains his body, knocks Kira unconscious, grows, and starts to attack the city. The rangers put the clues together and figure out Kira must have come into contact with Fossil Ador at the museum. Haley goes to check the museum for her, and the others go to battle the monster. Zeltrax ambushes the rangers with an army of triptoids. Holy crap, the triptoids finally show up after, like, how many episodes has it been? Like, nine or ten episodes? Remember the triptoids? I hope so, because they don't get any reintroduction or explanation. If you happen to have missed the episode game on, your s Zeltrax just has these new minions that he has for some reason and the rangers don't see anything weird about them zeltrax doesn't treat them any differently very odd choice especially since in this episode both the tyrannodrones and the triptoids are both here but they're completely separate connor and ethan continue on to the monster while tommy hangs back to battle with zeltrax because that's all zeltrax can do is fight tommy zeltrax sucks at the museum, Haley convinces a security guard to let her in and look for Kira. Uh, she finds Kira, and Haley info dumps on Kira that Fossil Ador can't control minds if they're morphed. Okay. How does she know this? Why does she know this? Why does she awkwardly exposit this to Kira? Why does Haley bother telling her this? Why does the episode stop dead for Haley to explain this to Kira when the very next scene is Kira riding in on her Zord unmorphed into battle? Like, the monster's right there. She's not morphed. It could still mind control her if it remembered that it could do that. Then Kira morphs, but why didn't she morph going in? Like, yeah, her riding on the Zord, it's a really cool visual, but it's at the expense of logic. I really have to wonder why in the world did they feel the need to stick in that extra bit of exposition from Haley when so often so much stuff just goes right by it completely unexplained. Why was this the thing that they felt they, the need to stop the episode dead for and explain just to mess it up in the next scene? Tommy fights off the trip toys and Zell tracks. They retreat and Tommy tells the Rangers to aim for the missing bone. It's weak spot. Why didn't Tommy tell them that earlier? This is his monster. He knows what it does. Like, he just knows this. It's not like he learns this. It's not, it's not like the monster is Zeltrax and Mesagogs or something, and he overheard them say something about the missing bone on its chest or whatever. He made the monster. He knows its weak spot, and apparently he just forgot until this moment. And he's like, oh yeah, Rangers, uh, weak spot. They destroy the monster, and at the lab, Kira wonders... Why did Mercer have the fossil door in his museum in the first place? Because it's his? Him and Tommy made it. I mean, to be fair, uh, Kira wasn't there when Tommy told Connor and Ethan that him and Mercer are the ones who made the monster in the first place, but you'd think that in between destroying the monster and walking back to the lab, Tommy might have filled her in on this. It, And it's weird, the episode tries to make this a dramatic moment, where, like, 
It's a moment of revelation for Kira. Like, she's starting to put together, Mercer might be a bad guy. It doesn't really make any sense because Mercer has a dinosaur museum. He has a dinosaur skull. Makes sense to put it in the museum, even if it's just in storage. Especially when he doesn't have the other piece that makes it, like, come to life and turn evil. Speaking of Mercer, at the Island Fortress, Mercer is dressed up in a black cloak for some reason. Don't know where he got this. And he's working really rushed, putting together a bunch of things, trying to prevent his transformation into Mesagog. He's trying really hard to fight back. He's stressed. He's sweating. He's... He's really trying, and then he, uh, it's not good enough, and Mesagog breaks through, and he fully transforms into Mesagog, and Mercer is gone, and Mesagog is the one in control. And it's kind of weird, considering the last episode, he was pretty calm about turning back and forth into Mesagog. What changed in between last episode and this episode? I know last time it was Mesagog turning into Mercer, and Mesagog wasn't really a big fan of that idea. But then once he turns into Mercer, Mercer seems perfectly aware of what was going on, and he just calmly walks away. He doesn't seem to care at all. But now he does, to the point where he's trying to prevent himself from turning back into Mesagog, and he's sweating and he's all stressed out. And, I don't know, it's kind of a weird way to end it. Overall, this episode was really good. The roller coaster of quality continues. Aside from a few questionable bits, this is a well-paced episode, almost on par with the premiere. The stuff with Trent at the beginning is all really cool. Jeffrey Perazzo is a great actor. He's able to play this, uh, like, not quite in his right mind, taken over, brainwashed character really well. Invisibility also is a power Trent apparently has now. That's kind of weird, considering Tommy also has the power of invisibility. That, like, honestly, they haven't used a whole lot, so I wouldn't blame somebody for forgetting that, but, uh... Kind of weird for two characters to share the same civilian power. Everything with Trent, unfortunately, is just a follow-up to what ha what's happened in the previous few episodes. He doesn't really have a big impact on this specific episode. The Tyrannosaurus statue resembling the one that chased Tommy never turns out to mean anything this time. There's a lot of weird fake-outs in this episode. Mercer apparently bought the Asian History Museum from Ninja Storm and switched its focus to dinosaurs, and that got me thinking... Is that why Sensei Watanabe was contacted last season to take care of something? In reality, the reason is probably they had this, like, museum storage set that was pre-existing, and they're, they're just reusing it because why not? But, uh, it's fun to speculate on unintentional connections. The plot with Kira and Fossilidor's skull reminds me of Billy in Return of the Green Ranger from way back in Mighty Morphin. Rita casts a spell on Billy to make him bring her the Dragon Dagger, and I genuinely wonder if there was any influence from that classic episode. Tommy casually reveals that he and Mercer created a monster that had mind control abilities, and that made me remember how in the comics, Draken, the evil Tommy, is good friends with Finster. Huh. Why in the world were they trying to create a monster, let alone one with mind control abilities? This bizarre revelation is never given any follow-up. And oddly, instead of just destroying the monster, they just disabled it. What was stopping Tommy and Mercer from just destroying the monster? And I guess you could surmise that, while well, Mercer was always kind of sort of evil even back then, so maybe he told Tommy that he destroyed the skull, but he really didn't, and he kept it hidden. But then why would Tommy be concerned with the bone that it needs to regrow its body? If there's no skull, then there's n nothing to, like, use the bone on. Unless there's more. Did Tommy and Mercer create multiple monsters that could be regenerated from using that bone or something? The Triptoids finally make another appearance after, uh, nine episodes. I really wish we'd gotten some reason why they're being used. They just show up and are treated like they've always been here. And like I've said before, I think that they should have been mixed with the Tyranodrones, gradually phasing out the Tyranodrones in favor of the Triptoids, or establish from the beginning that the Tyranodrones and the Triptoids have their own specific abilities that can be used in different situations. And what makes it weirder is that this episode does use both sets of foot soldiers, but keeps them completely separate. And it almost feels like there's two separate factions of villains, each with their own group of foot soldiers. 
Haley actually does something useful this time. Now, I don't think Tommy's fight with Zeltrax was that important, and he probably could have gone in Haley's place, but I'll be charitable this time and assume that he didn't want to raise suspicion that Kira could possibly be involved with the Rangers. Tommy is still stuck in his morphed form, after all. The scene between Haley and the security guard felt like a VR Trooper's scug scene. The security guard is standing there like he was expected, and I have expected to see him turn into a scug like VR Troopers so often would do. When Haley tells Kira Fossilidor can't use his mind control when she's morphed, why does she wait until being right in front of the monster before morphing? Kira riding her Zord, yeah, it's a really cool visual, but it's kind of undercut by the fact that Haley just told her, unmorphed, you're vulnerable to his mind control. Why doesn't Tommy tell the Rangers about Fossilidor's weak spot? Did he just forget and then suddenly remember? Probably it's Tommy. He's forgetful. That's a trait of his. <laughs> at the end, there's that attempt at a, dr a dramatic moment when Kira wonders, why did Mercer have Fossilidor in his museum? But it's completely undercut by the information Tommy revealed earlier that he and Mercer are the ones that made Fossilidor in the first place. Why wouldn't Mercer keep the dinosaur skull in his own dinosaur museum? And again, to be fair, Kira wasn't present at the time, but shouldn't Tommy have filled her in on this? This episode was pretty enjoyable. I really liked this one, and it made me... Uh, let's see, what's the next episode? Bully for Ethan. I don't... I don't have clear memories of that episode. I don't really know what that one's about. So yeah, I'm looking forward to more episodes now. This was a okay episode, despite all the weirdness and some things I had questions about. This was still a pretty fun episode. It was well-paced, and there wasn't just a bunch of garbage going on for no reason. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.